Now, think of the National Trust and what comes to mind. The countryside and coastline, historic houses and castles, nature reserves. Well, the organisation is increasingly becoming involved in some of the key political arguments of our times, whether it's the badger cull, wind farms or fracking. Now, the Trust is taking on another huge challenge, how to coax kids away from their digital gadgets and back to the great outdoors. Kissing a frog, that's just out of That's just not happening. You're not going to kiss a frog? It's unhygienic. What about pick up a frog? Yeah. In a new film supported by the Trust, David Bond embarks on a journey to sell nature to British families. Troubled by what he sees as the growing ranks of children in their bedrooms in front of screens, he appoints himself managing director of nature and sets out to get more kids outside. In a moment, we'll be talking to the Trust Director General, but first, Victoria MacDonald has been out in the countryside to look at the battles the organisation is fighting. No matter how much the National Trust wants to be about green and leafy places and cosy cream teas, modern life just keeps on interfering. Today, it's fracking. They could perhaps support it, according to the Trust's chief executive, but they probably couldn't support wind farms. And of course, there's housing and the thorny issue of greenbelt land and whether there should be more building on it. Bookham and Surrey is a case in point. The National Trust was one of a number of groups who successfully objected to a development of 81 houses on this site. James Simpson from the local planning group Bookham Vanguard took us past the now open fence and the missing developer's sign. I don't want to see this go down to house and not really. No, it's, it's, it's been it's been a public access right away for, oh, since I came into the village in 1976. And, um... and the National Trust objected for much the same reasons, because this is on Greenbelt land. Yet there is a tension for the National Trust. There are some who say they're standing in the way of progress, be it new houses or wind farms. While there are others, like those in the villages around here, who see them as a line of defence against the destruction of their countryside. Houses need to be built, but not on green belt. They must be built on brownfield sites, I think. It is so beautiful, and I think it's just about enough to be for the numbers of the people that are already here. Yet they do need more housing in the area. Well, I think we've received mixed messages from the present government, to be quite honest, and, and all the sometimes what the government says is not always what, what actually happens. The green belt, if you ask uh, most government ministers, is, is still regarded as sacrosanct. That's why we are looking at whether we should uh, take small areas out of the green belt, then they can be developed. In the end, that's the National Trust's best weapon. No clear message from the government and a public who also want to keep their green and leafy spaces. Victoria MacDonald, well, the Trust Director General, Dame Helen Ghosh, joins you now in her first television interview since taking on the job. Let's just start with getting kids off their uh, digital screens and into the countryside. In truth, this, this is quite a clever gimmick to try and get a younger echelon into, into your premises and countryside. Um, well, our purpose as a charity uh, is to look after special places forever for everyone. And when you take that bit about forever, the future generation, the future generation, the children we saw on that film, the uh, four in, uh, uh, we only have, we know that about only about 20% of children get outside into the country and connect with nature. All the others at the moment have no connection with nature. So there's quite an insurance policy for us, it's true, in getting more children out there engaging with nature, loving the places that we love. So um, you're going to have Pied Pipers running around, sort of tr troops of children tagging along? Uh, absolutely not. Um, one of the most successful uh, initiatives we've done in recent years is a thing called 50 Things to Do Before You're 11 and 3 quarters. Um, I don't know if you've looked at the list of things to be done, but they're all really good practical ideas that people can do, uh, children can do, get out and about, everything from organising snail races, playing conkers, climbing a tree, making a den, the kind of things that you and I probably thought were absolutely natural parts of our childhood. Uh, they can go to our places, uh, our properties, they'll find rangers, they'll find volunteers there to help them and their parents because I think getting parents involved is very well, important. Well, it's obviously an interesting endeavour and it'd be very interesting to see how many do tear themselves away. But then let's just have a look at your, your new task uh, of running the National Trust. I mean, let's look first at housing. Isn't there a, 
fair degree of nimbyism here. I mean, after all, one of the great crises in the country is a terrible shortage of houses. And you have hamlets and little villages that are part of your estates. And there are many places where you probably could infill housing. But you're pretty much against it. No, absolutely not. We do uh, promote developments on our land where we think it's appropriate. And particularly, we look for precisely uh, those kind of infill slots, potential developments uh, in our villages. We have around 5,000 uh, residential tenants already. Um, and we're absolutely but not... building more. Uh, when, and we are in some places building more where we think it's appropriate, back to our mm. purpose, to look after our special places. Uh, so all the issues, all the decisions we make come back to that point about how does it help us, on behalf of the nation, look after what is, after all, their backyard. Uh, we look after Britain's backyard, but there, uh, there not are, just our own. There are some of your tenants who say you don't look after them, and they've complained very loudly that... Uh, they've been neglected and that in some of them being thrown out and others uh, don't get the repairs they ask for and generally life hasn't been so good for them. Um, as I said, we have about 5,000 residential uh, tenants and about 70% of those both would recommend us as a landlord and are very happy with how we behave as a landlord. 30% is quite a big number. But we absolutely the... accept that, particularly with some of our older mm. properties, um, repairs haven't been kept to date, up to date as well as they should have done. Um, and we're pumping a lot of money in. We're spending £15 million this year on that. Um, and that sense of the personal relationship with mm. our tenants is very important because most of them actually stick around. Most of our tenancies are for about nine years. Now, you're open-minded about fracking but you're opposed to wind farms. I mean, some are spectacularly beautiful. I mean, you can go to Cornwall, you can go to uh, the northwest and the rest of it. What's wrong with the wind farm? Um, we are worried about carbon emissions. Uh, we're worried about carbon emissions and climate change because of the impact on some of our wonderful places, you know, our coasts that are falling into the sea. Um, and so what we are looking for is low carbon energy that fits with a landscape. Um, that is why we're trying out some wonderful examples of renewable energy. I don't know if you've walked up the backside of Snowdon recently, but we've got a wonderful hydro scheme there. Right. So if you, in all these cases, we need to look at the impact of the development on our places mm. and the surroundings of our places. Right. So we won't always oppose wind okay. farms, as we haven't done. And as well, I said, mm. we won't, uh, at the moment, our presumption is against fracking right. on our land. Unless... Let, let me just very quickly then, yeah. because uh, we, uh, last we just we could talk about so much. I wanted to talk about badges, but I got, but women, you got there, but you're very critical of the sort of Etonian set and lack of women in high places in 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 the rest of the setup, if you like. Um, I I got there. Um, I think there are wonderful opportunities in the public sector and in the NGO sector to get there. Um, I'm delighted that Parliament Week in a couple of weeks' time is going to focus on how we can get more women but into public do life more in there. Parliament. And we're going to Chartwell, the home of Winston Churchill, another of our properties, uh, to argue the case for more women in politics. Right. Thank you very much indeed, Dame Helen Ghosh. Thank you.